Uh, it's been a rough couple weeks. My wife uh, posted on Facebook, this has been the hardest week of her life. And um, last week was. And um, I just want to thank you so much because, you know, just like you, you know your heart's beating, but you don't know it's beating. When, you know, there's, there's a life flowing through you. And you've been our heartbeat through all this. You're our church family, and we love you. Um, you know, Fonda's a, a daddy's girl, and and uh, um, George was a a man who had struggled in his life. But Jesus Christ had changed him, and it's amazing to see that incredible grace at work because. Um, he was a changed man. He was he he ended his race well, uh, and I, I'm so thankful for that. I don't know where you are in your life now, but you can start today. Isn't it glorious? Uh, God doesn't define us based upon our past. He defines us based upon our future, and He has made and formed and shaped us for an incredible future. And our problem is we get so stuck in our past and we have trouble forgiving ourselves when the Lord has forgiven us. You know, we, we, we love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so Brother Michael uh, said several years ago, and it stuck with me, Brother Michael, is that Lincoln... I gotta give him a hug. <laughs> Would you pop in here? This is my son. <laughs> Oh, you snuck in on me, Lincoln. <laughs> How am I going to preach now? <laughs> um, I don't even know what I was, going, what I was saying. <laughs> they said, God, God has set our hearts towards the future. And we have trouble even forgiving ourselves. That's what that's I thank you. We have trouble forgiving ourselves. Don't we? We'll forgive everybody else. Sometimes we have trouble forgiving ourselves. And we got to let the Lord do His work in our life and let it go. And, you know, George had a lot of regrets in his life, but he was able to let the Lord take care of that on the cross. And I'm so thankful when he entered into judgment that we're all going to face judgment. He didn't go as a sinner, he went as a son. And he didn't go alone. He had an advocate. His name was Jesus. And I'm so thankful for that. That's why it's so important what we do here. Because there are people in your life that are stuck. And they need deliverance. They need freedom. And Jesus gives the freedom. He gives us the deliverance. If we just call on his name, he gives us a new hope and a new future. Uh, it just means so much to me. Thank you, Michael, for preaching last Sunday. Uh, I, I'm so thankful for uh, Keith and the leadership, all that you've done. Uh, it just uh, Saturday before, uh, that was a great time. Uh, I don't know if you heard much about the Valentine's party, but uh, we had a good time there. And thank you, for Grace, for that. And uh, I, I told... Um, Michael, I think I told Keith too, that it's, it's wonderful to be expendable, but yet wanted. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of, it's just a beautiful thing to know that our church is a place where, you know, if, they're, if the pastor isn't present, everything moves along. There's no glitches. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. And while I may be ex while I may be expendable, which is my aim and goal in ministry, is I want to equip the saints. 
uh, I'm still wanted, and that's nice. <laughs> that's a nice place to be. Um, so, um, well, we're, we're going through, um, you know, I'm finishing up a couple things, and we're talking about, uh, you know, how important it is for us to find our place in the body of Christ. Because not only were we saved for eternal life, we were saved for this present life. And we were saved to serve. We were saved to give praise to God and to find our place. And so uh, I've been talking to you about um, we are the clay and he is the potter. And the potter has formed and shaped us to, to be vessels to be filled by him to accomplish his purposes. And the shape I've been talking about for the several, last couple of weeks... And, and this, you've got to find your shape. You've got to know how God is shaping you. Because you were not only saved to serve, but you were saved to be a part of, of the body of Christ. Jesus is ahead and we're all parts of the body. That's what the Bible says. And we all belong. We're different. But we're the same because the same blood that courses through our spiritual veins is the same blood that courses through my spiritual veins is the same blood that courses through my, my, my son Lincoln's spiritual veins. That's why we belong to each other. You know, I call Keith the brother from another mother uh, because we belong to one another. And so you got to understand, what, what are your spiritual gifts? If you've been saved... The Holy Spirit dwells in you, and you've been given a Holy, a Holy Spirit-inspired gift to build others. What is your spiritual gift? I'm going to talk a little more on that next Sunday. What's your heart? What floats your boat? What excites you? Yeah, I've always been drawn to older adolescents to teenagers. And, I, you know, I just always have been drawn. So that's been, been my heart throughout my ministry. What are, my, what are your abilities? What are your persona- what's your personality? And we'll talk a lot about personality today. And finally, what are your experiences? And you ask yourself, okay, based upon my spiritual gifts, my heart, my abilities, my personality, and my experiences, God is shaping me to serve in this ministry. Whatever that ministry may be. It might be in a children's ministry. It might be in a youth ministry. It might be um, doing the works of service. It might be in a prayer ministry. I mean, there's so many ways. It might be being a part of this, um, being uh, a part of helping things uh, work here at the church, you know, cleaning, uh, helping people, sending cards, making. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that we can make an impact for Christ and his kingdom so that you can be a part of that heartbeat. So that's, that's what we've been talking about. Um, you know, I, I, I want you to know your shape. And this morning, I'm going to talk about what the principles, the biblical principles of your personality. And I wanted to look at Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14 first. So if you've got your Bibles, uh, turn to Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. So this is what he says. Why don't you stand as we honor God's word and we read it together. This is David giving praise for what God has done. For you formed my inward parts. You have covered me in my mother's wound. And that word covered means he has knit me together in my mother's wound. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works that my soul knows them very well. Father, in the moments that we have here today, I just pray that you pour out your spirit. You know where I am as your vessel. And I'm thankful that as I put my myself into your hands you can use me to accomplish your purposes that you can actually use fools to confound the wise and father i i'm here and and i just ask you father to pour out your spirit on your word i ask lord that the words of my mouth 
and the meditation of my heart can be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, I lift this prayer. All God's people say, Amen. All right, you may be seated. Um, I think one of the problems, if you, I don't know where you are in your life right now. You might be wondering, remember a couple weeks ago I told you about the decaffeinated church? You know, sometimes you, have you ever been in a decaffeinated church? What I said, you know, it looks like it, it smells like it, but it doesn't have the power, it doesn't have the punch, you know? And sometimes you might feel like your life has been, is a decaffeinated church, uh, decaffeinated itself. Where's the power? You know, what's going on in my life? Why, why don't I, I keep on spinning my wheels? You know, what, what's happening here? And what I want you to see out of this message this morning is, first of all, understand that God formed and shaped you. All right, I want you to say, with your mouth, God made me. You ready? God made me. And God makes no mistakes. Can you say that? God makes no mistakes. So God made me, and I am not a mistake. And so often, we have heard over and over again that how short we fall, you know, you, you were, you're this way or that way. I mean, you have all these messages. I don't know what your family was like. I don't know what your parents were like. I don't know what your school was like. But we have these messages that get stuck in our head. Uh, I told you uh, several months ago about my experience with, at, when my mother was going to college for the first time, and, I, and, and there was the big flood of 69 or whatever it was, and I was five or, I think it was five years old at the time, maybe four, and uh, she had to take me to school, and I, I'm, I've always been a precocious child, you know, all, my hands are always busy, and so I'll walk down the hall, and I see this P-U-L-L. Remember the story? And you know what the precocious kid did? I, I, I pulled, and you know what happened? Uh, the, the all broke loose. I mean, it, it, people were coming out, and I, my, my stomach sank, and I thought to myself, and it was just my, myself saying this, man, I screwed up again. You know, I, I'm always, and, and throughout my whole life, I thought, man, I pulled that lever again, didn't I? You know, I didn't mean to, but I messed up again, you know, and so I, I've had this thought in my head, I'm a screw up, I'm a screw up, I'm a screw up. You know, that's something that we all, those voices in your head, and you probably can name a few. And, and what God is trying to say to you this morning is no, you aren't a mistake. I don't make mistakes. I made you, and I made you for a purpose. I made you for a reason. I don't, God formed me and in my inward parts. And the word covered is the idea of being knitted or, or uh, knitted together. He covered me in my mother's womb. Because, and, and he goes on to say, marvelous are your works. You know who he's talking about? You. Him. All of us were knit together in our mother's womb. And God makes no mistakes. One of the things that's so important to understand in, in this idea of esteem is that you find your esteem and not who you think you are, but who Christ is. And that God formed and shaped you for a reason, for a purpose. And you have your nose, you have your mouth, you have your ears, you have your personality. And no one is like you in this world. And God wants you to become the best you you can possibly be. And how does that happen? It happens when you find who you are in Christ and you put yourself back into the hands of the molder of clay. And you say, God, I am in your hands and I'm going to be moldable and I'm not going to try to do this on my own anymore. I'm trusting in you. And so God wants you to, just like he formed and shaped you in, uh, in your mother's womb, he wants to form and shape, continue to form and continue to shape 
who we are. What happens is there's other molds that come along. We live in a sinful, rotten world. And uh, that's why uh, Paul said, do not be conformed to the ways of this world. Because what happens is we, we get these patterns. Oh, you know, in order for me to be happy, I have to have this job. Or I have to have this position. Or I have to have, uh, you know, this pleasure in place. Uh, you know, in order for me to really be happy, I have to have uh, this person. And before we know it, we're being formed and shaped by the patterns of this world. And God says, no, 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 no. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that transformation occurs here that you may know the will of God. And so that's kind of where he's going with this. God makes no mistakes. The second thing I want you to see is that everyone is fearfully and wonderfully made. And that means that God's character and personality go into every person. Some people don't believe that. Some religions don't believe that. Some religions teach that since you are an infidel, you're wasting air by breathing. And that's why uh, Christianity is the root of democracy. It's the foundation of democracy. Because we believe that every person has dignity. Uh, that, that, you know, what, what uh, Thomas Jefferson said, we have uh, the right to live. It's an inalienable right. And so that's where we come from. Just because you've done what you've done doesn't mean that God hasn't formed and shaped you in your mother's womb. God is not shaping you by your past and your past mistakes. God is shaping you with your future. Here's the other thing you got to understand. Do you, do you think the God of heaven and earth looks down on the banister of life and he sees uh, country lines? Does he see state lines? Does he see political lines? Does he see county lines? Does he see color? Does he see class? What, what God, the God of heaven and earth looks down and he sees two kinds of people. And you know who Jesus came to seek and save? He came to seek and save them that were lost. So there's only two kinds of people. Those who are safe and secure and those who are lost. It's our job as a church to go after those who are lost. It's our job as a church not to look at class, not to look at color, not to look at creed. If, if, if a Muslim were to walk in, in here this morning, we're not asking him to switch teams. Jesus didn't come because Christianity is another world religion. He wants every person in this world to have a personal and passionate relationship with God the Father through his Son and it has nothing to do with switching teams. You understand? It has everything to do with the gospel. Jesus came. You know why? You needed a savior. You, 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 you. We all needed a savior. We all are sinners. We are all in the same boat. Heaven's a perfect place and guess what? You ain't perfect. You know what that means? You're a sinner. I would even say you're a dirty, rotten, stinking sinner. Uh, you know, I've, I've said over and over again, a pig's still a pig, even if you dress it up. You know, just because you go to a garage, it doesn't make you a car. Just because you're going to church, it doesn't make you a Christian. Just because you do the right things and say the right things and try to perform the right way doesn't mean that you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. It just means that you're trying to perform your way into heaven. And it's not by works of righteousness that we're saved. It's by a person and his name is Jesus. He got call on his name to be saved. If you ever face the loss of someone dear to you, how many of you faced that loss? Someone very, very dear to you. Uh, here's, here's what I think, okay? And maybe you, you think the same way I do. Here's what I think. Number one, I'm thinking, 
man, if it were up to me to be good enough to go to heaven, I'm in trouble. I'm also thinking if it were good enough, if it was up to that person, if it was up to George to be good enough to go to heaven, he missed it. He couldn't do it. He failed. But what if it's not about how good we are? What if it's about how good Jesus is? What if it's not about goodness at all? What if it's about the perfect sacrifice that he made so that once and for all we could be eternally forgiven? What if it's about that perfect sacrifice? What if it's whoever calls on the name of the Lord is saved? You know what that means? I don't have to be perfect because I have a perfect Savior. And He perfectly forgives me through the cross. And all I have to do is call on His name and I'm saved. Now, what else happens is He transforms me. I become a new creature in Christ. The old is gone, the new has come. But so, I, I don't know how someone could get along if they did not trust in Jesus. Here's what I'm trying to say. Everybody's different. And we have a lot of prejudice in this world. It's, I, I think it's getting worse rather than getting better. But that being said, what, what we should look at whenever we see someone, it's, it, we shouldn't see a class, we shouldn't see a color, we shouldn't see a creed, we shouldn't see the outside of a person. We should be asking, are you safe? Are you one of the 99 that are secure in the fold? Are you that one that Jesus is going after to seek and save? And that's God's heart for the lost. And we should have that heart as well for those who are lost. As a church, we should have that heart. And not be about what people look like on the outside, but what, what's going on. People need, need salvation. They need forgiveness. They need Jesus. Uh, the third thing is that, that we were all made to give praise to God. Marvelous are your works. My, my soul knows them well. And, and what I want to get at here this morning, I'm probably not going to get at everything because um, uh, I, I knew I was going to do this. But, uh, but what I want you to get at is this. There was a first creation and you were made to give praise to God. When God formed and shaped you in your mother's womb, he placed God's image in you. But what has happened is we live in a sinful world. Sin had entered this world and we get all messed up. That's why there is many a day when you're wondering, God, am I really in your will? Am I really where you need me to be? And, and, and you have all these uh, things that you say about yourself, things that you say about others. You have bitterness and frustration in your heart. You're judging others based upon what they do. And you're having trouble forgiving them because you don't see them through the eyes of Jesus and the cross. Jesus who loved us and gave for us eternal life and that we don't crucify ourselves uh, we, we, we keep this uh, bitterness uh, in our heart that root growing we, we struggle because we have this flesh and this human nature part of us while we're saved yet there Paul said it as clearly as anyone else and he was a man of God he said yeah I, I do what I don't want to do and I don't do what I d should do oh wretched man that I am who can save me from this body of sin you know what his answer was brother Danny what was his answer thanks be to God through Jesus Christ for there is therefore now no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. We, we struggle. We, we, and so we need a new creation. And that's why I wanted to touch base with you on uh, this next verse on Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. Because here's the essence of salvation. For by what? Grace. You know what grace is? Grace is what love does. 
Bottom line, grace is what love does. And how in the world did God demonstrate his love? God demonstrated his love in this, that while we were yet a sinner, Christ died for us. So it's by grace, what God has done, that you have been saved. And it's how? It's through faith. It's not through works. It's not through effort. Faith is like a doorway. Jesus is knocking. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And faith is like a door. And you open, by faith, you open up the door. And grace is invading you. But you have to have faith. How much faith, Pastor John? Does a faith have to be sincere? Uh, or, you know, what, what is it? I, I think you can ju- be sincerely wrong. Just as much as you can be sincerely right. So I don't know how much... I know Jesus is the one that saves. It's not our faith that saves. It's through faith, but it's Jesus that saves. It's what Jesus has done that saves us. It's by grace that we're saved. Through faith, and that not of ourselves. Can it be any clearer? Not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of any effort that you make. Not of any performance. You can't be good enough. You can't be clean enough. You can't, uh, you know, it's not salvation by addition. You do more dues. Or salvation by subtraction. You don't do the don'ts. It's salvation by grace through faith. It's a gift. Tell me what you need to do with the gift. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for blessing me. Yes, I received your gift. And that's what communion is all about. You open up your mouth and you receive the bread. You receive the blood. And so it's by grace that we're saved, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then look at the next verse. The next verse says, for we are his workmanship. So not only were you created in your mother's womb uh, to give praise to this God, but what salvation is, is not only forgiveness of sin, and whew, I get to go to heaven now. Yeah, it's not just fire insurance. In fact, I say to you, if you came up this altar, and you prayed a prayer, and you thought because you prayed that prayer, and you asked Jesus to save you and keep you from going to hell, and you walk back to your pew thinking, whoo! Man, I just, you know, I just got a little fire insurance. I can keep on living the way I normally live and do the things I normally do. Knowing that I prayed that prayer, you don't have a clue. You don't have a clue who Jesus is. That's why Jesus told the parable about the unforgiving servant. He told a parable about a a servant who was forgiven a debt that he could not even possibly pay. Millions of dollars. And and he the, the unforgiving servant goes to the king, goes into his court and, and says, Please forgive me of this debt. And and the king has compassion, forgives him, and the forgiving sir uh, the, the unforgiving servant goes out and you re- remember what he did? He grabs another servant, and what does he say? You pay me what you owe. No sense of joy. No sense of excitement. No change in his heart. He was only after what he was after. And and that's why you've got to check your heart. Because if you have unforgiveness in your heart for another person, we all struggle with it. If you have unforgiveness in your heart for another person... That means you're not looking at the cross. Because if you look at what you have been forgiven, this million dollar debt, the debt, that ten dollar debt that someone owes you, is meaningless. You're so caught up in the joy of your salvation, 
that you, you, you don't get down. You, you, you're not under the circumstances. You're above the circumstances because of who Christ is in your life. We are His workmanship. In other words, we were made to give praise to God and, and, to, and adore Him. And sometimes you have to do what Psalm 22 says, a sacrifice of praise. You might not feel like it. You might not, your heart might not be in it, but sing praises to God. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. Oh my goodness. See from His head. His hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. How in the world can you think that you're on higher ground at the cross? How? How? No, you can't. We are his workmanship. And so God begins to do this work in our life. And my concern for you who are here is that you thought a genuine prayer would save you? Come on now. Who saves you? Does a genuine prayer save you? Who saves you? Jesus saves. And when Jesus saves, behold, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with church. It has nothing to do with switching sides. It has everything to do with calling on the name of Jesus Christ for your salvation. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Wait a minute, Pastor John. I thought you said it wasn't about... Good works. Our salvation isn't, but our gratitude is. I'm so grateful and so thankful for my Father in heaven. I just want to please him. Fonda just lost her daddy. I really hurt for her. You know what she wanted to do? She wanted to make her daddy happy. Just wanted to please him. Make him a smile. Did she have to earn that love? Was there anything she had to do? I mean, dads, come on. Help me here. Is there anything your daughter has to do or your son has to do to earn your approval? Really? Are you is there no. No. They're yours. They belong to you. And you just want to make them smile. And when Serenity comes up to me and gives me a big hug, oh, it lights my world. I mean, are you, did you uh, I'm going to ask you this question. I'm probably not going to go through the rest of the stuff. Um, but do you live life to impact the heart of God and to make him smile? Do you? Or, or do you live life to make someone else smile or yourself to feel good you're so concerned about yourself and so concerned about what other people think that you you don't even think about making God smile once through the day you don't think about how you're impacting the heart of God and as a child see we're going to be judged not only as a sinner without Jesus we're going to go into judgment as a sinner. But with Jesus, we're going to go into judgment as a son, as a child. But are you going to be a child that serves? That's the third way we're judged. We're judged as servants. Are you going to be a child that loves to make your father smile and you want to be so like him that every moment of every day is about becoming more and more and more like Jesus so you sound like Jesus you feel like Jesus you act like Jesus you follow Jesus with every moment of every day and when you don't your heart is shattered 
That's what made George. I know he was saved because when he failed, his heart was shattered. He just wanted to please his dad. He didn't allow the father to call him father because there was only one father and he was in heaven. Did he struggle? We are all going to struggle. But what sets us apart is we are new creatures in Christ and, and it's not only that we're saved by grace through faith and well, we get that, but we are his workmanship. We were made to give praise and glory to our Father in heaven and it is your hunger, your drive, your heartbeat to do that. Uh, I want to close with Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 1. Um, Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. What do dearly loved children do? They imitate their father. They mimic. Are you trying to mimic your daddy? In, your, in heaven, is that what drives you to, to make him smile? Therefore, do not... Excuse me. Um, and, and walk in love as a Messiah or Christ also has loved us and gave himself for us. A sacrificial, fragrant offering to God. See, here's what makes your dad in heaven happy. Just like Jesus loved us and gave, you love others and give sacrificially. You want to make your dad happy in heaven? You love till it hurts. You love till you lay down your life as a fragrant offer. Your, your life is about worshiping and adoring your father and reaching and seeking and saving the lost in such a way that you give and give and give. You're not a reservoir. You're not trying to preserve. You're not trying to protect. You're a river. And that river flows. What comes into you goes out of you. I want our church to be a river. Churches that become reservoirs they don't last long, do they, Brother Michael? Oh, we need to protect this. No, no. We need to be out seeking and saving the lost. And we need to let, we need to allow God to smile on me. And um, just a moment, but um, I was going to go through personality uh, types. And um, I'll, I'll do that another time. I don't know when. Next week I want to focus on spiritual gifts. But um, if... Uh, and I, I thank Brother Danny. He's, I'm going to, at 6, 6.30, I, we might switch times a little bit. I don't know, maybe it might be 6, so you have a little bit of time. To, next week, I'm going to talk about spiritual gifts on Sunday night. And I encourage you to come. And then, uh, and then he's going to speak a little bit. We're going to have a little bit of a worship. But I want to encourage you to come next week because it's so important for us to know our spiritual gifts. I want to sing a song. All right, I want to teach you a song. Um, there's a song that I learned a long time ago, and it goes something like this. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He show sure been good to me. Do you live life to impact God and make your father smile? Do you? So much of our praise songs talk about how God impacts us. But very few of them talk about how we impact God. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has...
smiled on me. He's show sure been good to me. It's from Bermuda. That's why you say show. All right, sing it with me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's show sure been good to me. Amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. God has smiled. God has smiled on me. Smiled on me. He has set me free. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's show sure been good to me. When we've been there. When we've been there. Ten thousand years. Bright shining as the sun. We know less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. God has smiled. God has, come on, stand up, smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's show sure been good one time. He's show sure been good two times. He's show sure been good to me. Keith, would you close?